The economy is good on paper, but I'm not doing great. Hey guys, welcome to this African Perspective. Thank you all for stopping by. So you guys, you know, the crazy thing is when you go on news or like all this mainstream news or um, when you go and actually read up news article, most of the things that you see is kind of like a false reality of what we are living. Like when it comes to the economy and the things that are being said, you will see a situation where they say there's a lot of jobs out there. Like, oh my God, like uh, the percentage of inflation and most of them are false. But one thing I don't understand is, do you think just because you come and lie to us and tell us that what we're going through is not really what we think we are going through? I don't know if the government think that we are actually not the ones experiencing it. Just because you tell me what I'm going through is not as much as I am feeling it, that maybe it's all in my head, that doesn't mean I'm not actually going through it. But, you know, what I think is maybe there are a lot of people who are actually uh, kind of a little bit dumb and they really believe what they hear the government tell them. They wait for the government to tell them what their situation is. I think the reason why they still do it, why the government still do it, is because it actually works for them. Because if it doesn't work, why would they continue doing it? Because I wouldn't be doing something that is not effective. So the fact that they lie on this, like news and so and all these uh, articles that they give you telling you this is what you're going through uh we are not in a recession all those type of things maybe there are some people who actually believe it because you can say whatever you want to say i know when i'm not good i know when i'm suffering i know when my pocket is not full enough i know when i'm struggling so what you say doesn't really matter. But for some people, maybe there are some who actually believe it. But before we get right into this video, make sure you click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and hit the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new video. Let's get right into it. Fortune put out an article, and to this article, I say, a uh, duh. This title, Americans are sinking in debt as household expenses grow faster than income, new poll says. The economy is good on paper, but I'm not doing great. Is the economy really good on paper for anybody other than corporations? <laughs> but like I said, a uh, duh, that, that's my analysis of this title. About two in three Americans say their household expenses have risen over the last year, but only about one in four say their income has increased in the same period. As household expenses outpace earnings, many are expressing concern about their financial futures. What's more for Americans, household debt has either risen in the last year or just hasn't gone away. Steve Shapiro, 61, who works as an audio engineer in Pittsburgh, said that he'd been spending about $100 a week on groceries prior to this past year, but now he's shelling out about $200. My income has stayed the same, the economy is good on paper, but I'm not doing great. I feel this dude, every single time we go to the grocery store, what we get for the same amount is just getting smaller and smaller. Every single time I walk into the grocery store, it's like I have to spend 50 to $80, even if I'm getting just something small. Exactly. This is what I'm saying. Let me share this clip with you so you can see and understand what it actually means. Like when you compare the money you spent back in the days, like just it's not even that long ago. A few years ago, the money you used to spend when you go to the store and how you just all of a sudden now when you go to the store, that uh, the amount of things you, you were able to get for that little amount cannot even get you anything much these days. Woo! <laughs> And some people are making the most money they've ever made in their entire life, but still they have no money with them. I keep saying this to you guys for real. And I know it's a reality for most people. While some are still making the same money that they made when the economy was kind of fair, you know, at least when they could spend like less money and still like be able to, you know, um, live well and have no problem. This economy is becoming bad and worse and worse. But at the same time, the people who still have the same, um, who are still receiving the same money that they received years ago, what do you want them to do? 
Eight in 10 Americans say overall household debt is higher or about the same as it was a year ago. About half say they are cur- they currently have credit card debt. Four in 10 are dealing with auto loans and about one in four have medical debt. Just 15% say their household savings have increased over the last year. Tracy Go- Gonzalez, 36, who works as a subcontractor in construction in San Antonio, has several thousand dollars in medical debt from an emergency room visit for what she thought was a bad what she thought was a bad headache, but it turned out to be a tooth infection. They'll treat you, but the bills are crazy. Gonzalez says she tried to avoid seeking medical treatment because of the costs. Relatively few Americans say they are very or extremely confident that they could pay an unexpected medical um, expense, 26%, or have enough money for retirement, 18%. Only about one third are extremely or very confident that their current financial situation will allow them to keep up with expenses, um, though an additional 42% say they're somewhat confident. I've been looking forward to retirement my entire life. Recently, I realized it's just not going to happen, said Shapiro of Pittsburgh, adding that his wife's $30,000 or so of student debt is a financial factor for his household. The couple had hoped to sell their house and move this past year, but decided instead to hold on to their mortgage rate of 3.4% rather than facing a higher rate. About three in 10 Americans say they've foregone a major purchase because of higher interest rates in the last year. Nearly one in four U.S. adults have student debt with the pandemic era payment pause on federal loans ending this month, contributing to the crunch. Will Klaus, 77, of Ohio said inflation is his biggest concern. He continues with a box of movie candy, snow caps that used to cost 99 cents is now $1.50 at the grocery store. That's 50% increase of price. Somebody is taking advantage of somebody. Americans are generally split on whether the Republicans or Democrats are better suited to handle the issue of inflation in the U.S. Three in 10 say they trust neither party to address it. Jerry Putnam, 85 of Thompson, Georgia, says she's been following the ongoing auto strikes with sympathy for those workers. Asked, She says, I don't think it's out of line what they're asking for when you see what the CEOs are making. I think things have gotten out of control. When you walk into a store and you see the next day across the board, a dollar increase, that's a little strange. I, un- I understand supply and demand, the cost of shipping, et cetera, but it seems to me everyone's looking at their bottom line. Putnam says she also sees six ch- her six children struggling financially more than her generation did. They all have jobs and never been without them. They're achievers, but I think at least two or three of them will never be able to buy a home. That is what I've seen. That is what I've been saying for the last, for the longest. But people who tend to be older just keep talking about bootstraps and saving money when many of us are just unable to save money. We're making money to just pay our day-to-day expenses. A slight majority of Americans poll 54% described their household financial situation as good. Okay, that's cool which is about the same as it's been for the last year, but down from 63% in March of 22. Older Americans are much more confident in their current finances than younger Americans. Just 39% of 18 to 29 year olds describe their household finances as good compared to the majority, 58% of those 30 and older. People with higher levels of education or higher household incomes are also are more likely than Americans overall to evaluate their finances as solid. About three quarters of Americans describe the nation's economy as poor, which is in line with the measurements from early last year. So what this tells me, and the rest of the article is just giving like polling answers and all that kind of stuff, but the birth rate will continue to decline. The housing market will continue to flux. People who are launching into adulthood right now will be stressed, which will impact their mental and their physical health. Most of us are in survival mode. The older generation that has had a chance to um, build equity in their home and be in their careers longer are a little bit more stable, but stability is not going to be a, a word that the younger generation can use because costs are too high and incomes are not meeting the costs. 
I don't know what to say about this, but, you know, I can see, like I said, the birth rate continuing to decline, housing market being stagnant. Um, because of that, it's just going to continue to put everybody in a state of flux. You guys go ahead and jump in the comments and let me know what you think about this. Like, comment, share. Every single time I go to the store and I'm about to check out, I am fighting for my life when I see that price and then I look at the cart and what is inside is not even a lot. In my mind, I just stand there and I'm crying, I'm weeping, like everything you can think of. It's, it's not easy, I'm telling you. Guys, I don't know how the average American is making it right now because from the looks of it, things are just going to hell. For example, if you want to rent an apartment, the landlord wants proof of income three times the rent and out here in northern New Jersey that means a one bedroom you got to be making 30 to 50 percent more than the national average the groceries have gone up like crazy it's like it seems like it keeps creeping up ever so slightly but after three four months you feel like it's it's a it's a you know you feel the increase because last year I would be shopping for myself alone twice a week and it would run me about 80 bucks each trip now it's costing me like 125 to 140 per trip and when I include going out maybe once or twice a week to eat my my total for food is coming out to be crazy it's over a grand and I know it wasn't like that growing up you know it's, it's gotten out of hand but People are walking around like nothing's uh, nothing's wrong, everything is fine, everything is dandy. But it won't be long before people are going to have to decide whether to pay the rent, pay the mortgage, or feed their families. And of course, people are going to choose to feed their families. And so, who knows what's going to happen. But I was at the mall the other day and it was pretty packed. But... There wasn't really that many people holding bags. It was just people hanging around window shopping, which doesn't mean squat. It just means people want to get out of the houses and hang around, maybe eat at the food court. And that the food court was popping, of course. But we're going to have to wait and see. I, I foresee a lot, of, a lot more shoplifting, a lot of stores going out of business because of that. And... There's going to be a lot of break-ins, a lot of cars being stolen, a lot of, a lot of parts being stolen, wheels, catalytic uh, converters, um, which is already happening. But it's going to like, you know, more and more people are going to want to do it because they have no other way. More and more people are going to turn to scamming and stealing and all that stuff because things have gotten so expensive. So... We'll see. What's the solution? I really, the only solution is for the banks and the Federal Reserve to forgive all debt. That's the only way. There's no other solution. Even if we, we took 20 nations to war and gave them money to buy from us, it still wouldn't help the situation. That is why the crime rate has become so high now. They steal when people people go to the store and steal a lot. If you guys look at your news, you can see what is going on. There's a lot of theft going on. And when this, you know, th this is simply what happens when you make people poor. Regardless of how at peace you guys are among each other, you guys were just chilling and vibing. When it comes to the time of uh, survival of the fittest, you're going to see everybody's going to turn against each other. People will start fighting. People will start sh and shooting guns at each other. People will start doing everything in order to survive. It will be like a competition. Like, who's going to get there first? Uh, what can I get from this person? What can I steal? from this person and it's like you can't even trust anybody that is creating an unsafe society with more poverty everything you need to know about the economy in 2024 in 60 seconds and pay attention because dude you are about to be affected the u.s gdp is predicted to grow only 0.8 in 2024 including a shallow recession in the first half of the year headline inflation is projected to decline 4.8% in 2024, but it will likely remain above 2%. The IMF, the Internal Money Fund, lifted its global inflation forecast for next year to 5.8%. Goldman Sachs warns of extreme job losses and bankruptcies in 2024, which we all knew if you've been paying attention. 
The global economy is essentially limping along with, with growth projected to slow from 3.5% in 2022 to 3% 2023 to 2.9% in 2024. The world growth outlook for 2024 has deteriorated with China's risks rising, but, but there are plenty of risks to the US economy in 2024, including a potential slowdown in GDP growth, as I mentioned, sticky inflation and a delayed negative economic impact from the Fed's aggressive, very aggressive rate hikes. If you feel smarter now, follow here. Things I had to give up because I can no longer afford them. Getting my hair dyed, literally at all. Highlights, forget about it. Getting my nails done, if you can't tell. Buying things for my friends. I used to be the kind of friend that would like, I don't know, just buy small things. Like, I'll buy that for you, you know? <laughs> forget that, I can't even do that for myself now. I used to be a Starbucks every day or like every other day type of person. Now I go like once every three weeks and it's a treat. Going to Target for fun, like as an activity. Like I used to just be like, let's go to Target and like buy something cute, like buy a little pack of earrings. Nope. I do not go in there unless I have a mission and I make a list, I'm in and out. Girl dates, like where you would go shopping and then like go to Starbucks and like get something to eat. Like now, like me and my friends are like going out and we're like, so like, you wanna go to McDonald's? Chick-fil-A, like you have to be rich to go to Chick-fil-A now. I don't even like Chick-fil-A. Like their salads, their wraps, their ice cream and their fries. And I can't even do that now because the salads are like $10. Driving around for fun. Like, I don't know if anybody, like that was a hobby for anyone. It was for me, especially in the fall. Like I drive around the mountains, like just for fun. Can't do that anymore. Gas is too expensive. Name brand clothing has always been like a luxury to me, but like now I literally can't tell you the last time I bought like something Nike brand new. Like, I can't tell you. I thrift everything. I, I can't afford it. And then nice makeup. I used to be the kind of person that would like go to Sephora like twice a month or Ulta and like buy like a nice high quality makeup. I literally cannot tell you the last time I bought like quality makeup. Like not that drugstore isn't quality. I actually prefer drugstore now because I'm used to it. But, you know, sometimes you want to splurge in an eyeshadow palette. I have not done that since probably 2016. Shopping at TJ Maxx or Home Goods in general, like, it is fun shopping. Like, you can't tell me that you're going in specifically to find something at TJ Maxx and you ever actually find it. Like, it's all just fun shopping, which is great. I can't do that. This girl, all I'm going to say to you is I think the economy actually taught you how to put priorities on things that are very important and uh, are things that you need more than all the ones that you wanted, uh, all those things that you were buying and doing. I guess the economy is kind of training and raising you right. <laughs> but it's, it's just a joke. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. You guys, make sure you please click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and click the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new video. I appreciate you guys. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know what you think. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.